Yes, we are live. Um, today is Thursday, January 28th, 2016, and I welcome Carolina, Makika, Michelle, Shambhala, Maria, and Valerie. Thank you all for coming at short notice. And Makika and I uh, continue our DNA webinars. Makika, do you have any any starting speech yes. for that? Go ahead. So, thank you, Max, and thank you, everybody, coming here today to learn about DNA. I'd just like to give you a brief review, the overview of our past show. So we briefly went through evolution from DNA and a hybridization standpoint, and we all know the human a hybrid species, and it's mixed with all the galactic brother and sister. Not all of them, but we have uh, many of their parts here and there. Now, and we spoke a little bit about first, first uh, contact, and uh, the one of the first contact species will come, or some of them are already here, is the Ayel. And uh, Max uh, described the difference and similarity what is the best thing for us to do now is live in a moment now and manifest ourselves to happiness and joy because that's how we're going to create the future from now, where we are. So from that, I go into wait the max to be ready. And I have a series of questions, but do welcome the, any question related to this topic from the audience. And that way, we could continue to expand our consciousness, and it's a wonderful thing. With that, I'm going to pass this mic over to Max. Thank you. So how yeah. many questions you got today? I have a series of questions, but I could, ta I could take it through. <laughs> mm -hmm. So more than 10, right? <laughs> no, I would say probably several. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, do you mind if I um, go into meditative state, or you want me like uh, 3D physical? Which way yeah. do you like me better? The, you know, it doesn't matter. Whichever comfortable for you, we could do meditate. We could all meditate with you. Send you a Reiki energy. How, th how about that? Yeah, I think you all. I had a pain a couple days ago. A uh, sharp pain came into my heart area. And I, in f in few minutes after I kind of got my breath, I posted on Skype uh, the invitation for healing, okay. and also emailed it to Jim. Oh, Sorry, I missed that it one. To Jim. So, and after that, next five hours were the happiest hours in my long, long time ever. Oh. The, <laughs> the pain was still there, but it was very minimal. But there, you know, how high I was, it was just extraordinary. It was, you know, for me, it is one of the best proofs that mm, remote Reiki works. And um, I was contacted by at least one person who who said they send the energy, and oh, it was uh, it was wonderful. It was thank you very much. I, you know, I felt my uh, more than myself. I felt. Felt that was me, Max. Self. That Thank was you. me, Max. I contacted you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. So, I bless you all. It will be us, Max, plus higher selves. Uh, we call them Eru. Mm -hmm. And I bless you all. And Baruch Atad and I, Shirakatayana Shum. Um, we want to start from hmm, blessing the DNA, blessing your DNA, blessing your bravery, blessing your connection, blessing the yin yang of your DNA. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for uniting in your interest. Thank you in uniting in your idea to go in inside and higher, inside and higher. Today we want to bring to you the idea of sound and light, and as a DNA, a, a DNA molecule, 
double-stranded DNA molecule as a catalyst, as a crystal, which converts light to sound and sound to light. Yes? So what's the difference between difference between sound and light, right? In simple terms, sound is mechanical vibration. And we speak mechanical, remembering about quantum mechanics. When you talk mechanical, it means all these clouds of electrons, all these clouds of atoms, all these crystals of nuclei of atoms and electronic orbitals, all of that together moves relative to each other, moves physically. It's a physical movement. The whole crystal of atoms moves back and forth, vibrates. So that's vibration is mechanical. Sound is mechanical. Although we remember mechanics is based on quantum mechanics, all is energy, all is a wave. But all these waves, waves together, synchronously move back and forth. They mechanically oscillate, vibrate. That's sound. And, you know, you are filled with, filled with sound. You vibrate. You can hear some of that sound. You can feel some of that sound. And it's always there. As long as you are alive, every cell is vibrating. Every component of the cell is vibrating. Most of these vibrations are beyond hearing level. You can't actually hear most of those because they are way higher, very high pitch, ultra, 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 super ultra sound. Not much can be measured by scientists yet, but the vibrations, mechanical vibrations are there. Some of those vibrations are circular, some molecules just spin very fast, and DNA likes spinning too. Some of the parts of DNA are spinning, and actually some of the enzymes responsible for spinning these DNAs are known, they're called helicases, helicases, helicases. They are responsible for spinning, so that is known. But uh, what is not known is that this spinning is meaningful. The spinning of the components of the cells is meaningful. There is certain resonance, certain talk, certain vortexes. It's like a complex clock mechanism where different wheels are spinning and talk to each other. So that is sound mechanical movement of molecules and groups of molecules and big clusters of molecules and water. Water. You are made of a magic medium, water. It is also a transformer. It connects you to other dimension. And DNA plays the role of a catalyst. You know, the word catalyst means it helps. It helps the process. It structures the process. It is something which brings the structure to the water in your body. Meaningful structure. The language. It gives the language to the water. So that sound, that vibration, is structured through DNA. Now, the light, the light. The light is an electromagnetic oscillation. Magnetic field becomes electric field, becomes magnetic field, becomes electric field. You know magnetic field, right? The compass. You know electric field, right? When your hair stands up, it's electric field. So these two fields are well studied, well known for last about 150, 180 years, you know the words of you know, the founders, Tesla, of course, you know. So electromagnetic, the light goes through the matter, and sometimes it passes through, and sometimes it's captured. And your world, our world, is penetrated with 
all sorts of electromagnetic waves. Visible light, invisible light, ultraviolet, infrared, microwaves, radio waves, from the shortest to longest. Ultra ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwave, radio waves. So this is electromagnetic and it doesn't necessarily involve mechanical vibration. So sound is mechanical, uh, light is electromagnetic. And you use cell phones, you use your radios, you use light, you use um, compass, you use GPS, all of that is electromagnetic. So it passes through the air, passes through the vacuum, sometimes passes through the solid matter. Now, your cells are rich in electromagnetics, very rich. They're warm, they are charged, the membranes of the cells are charged, the membrane of the nucleus is charged, the membranes of your organelles, you know, mitochondria, Golgi, many other organelles, liposomes, um, organelles, these my, my membranes are charged and they vibrate. And DNA is ch strongly charged and it's wrapped around also charged other substances, it's wrapped around charged proteins. So all of that is a charged complex clock mechanism which vibrates, and when the charges vibrate, they produce electromagnetic waves. And when electromagnetic waves interact with charged clusters of water, charged clusters of proteins, charged clusters of DNA, they vibrate them. So, so DNA works as a transformer from sound to light, or from sound to electromagnetic wave. Light is a component of electromagnetic wave, uh, part of the spectrum. And when electromagnetic wave uh, interacts with DNA structures, it produces the sound. Very high pitch, but it is the sound. So that idea of transformation from mechanical to electromagnetic, from electromagnetic to mechanical, we wanted to convey. And it is very meaningful because DNA is very meaningful. Meaningful. It has a language, so the transformation happens in a way similar to language in a way similar to conversion of thought, thinking to language, and from language to thinking. In a, it's it's similar way. And obviously there is more, more to that. Obviously there is a vortex, trans-dimensional vortex. DNA is a spiral, and it produces it is a trans-dimensional transformer. With the help of water, DNA transforms those signals into higher dimensions and from higher dimensions to lower dimensions. This is the main message. DNA is a transformer, transformer from sound to light, from light to sound, and from both to higher and from higher dimensional vibrations back. We are open to your comments and questions. Yes, thank you, Max. <laughs> or uh, I'm not sure, is this your higher? Yeah, Max and Eru. Eru is fine. Eru, Eru, Eru. Thank you so much. Um, so I am very interested in understanding a little bit more physical as well as non physical DNA so-called crystalline structure. Is that something you could expand on that topic? Hmm. Let's discuss it because the question is somewhat unclear, but um, keep in mind that DNA is known to be a crystal. It is a crystal. It's more, more or less single dimensional crystal. It's uh, a line or a, a, a linear a linear crystal. 
there is a linear inner core of DNA, which is somewhat little bit spirally. It's called stack of bases. Bases, stack of bases. Bases are parts of nu uh, nucleotides which make DNA, and they're stacked together like papers or like mac uh, match boxes one on top of another. Yes. So stack of bases. And this is pretty much crystalline. It is a semiconductor. It uh, has sort of unified uh, field of electrons. So it is crystalline. And the structure around the double helix around the, co the, the backbone is sort of crystalline. It's not as crystalline, but obviously it is spiral. So it is, it is, uh, has the properties of, of a crystal because it is uh, periodic and it's structured. So DNA by itself, double helix, is a linear crystal, a sort of linear crystal. But you might may mean something else, right? Yeah, so about this um, line of thinking of consciousness, um, D DNA has seemed to be able to communicate, as you say, its type of communication, language, vibration. I understand the DNA known as a physical double helix, but also there is a non-physical DNA, which some of what you talk about could go to higher, lower dimension. Is this some type of a DNA strands that are not visible, but we be able to link to that extra strand of DNA, which may not be physical DNA known as double helix? Is that some what you are talking about to go into different dimension? Possibly. Um, I guess Max is speaking. Max is speaking. Um, uh, as I understand, the our DNA, physical DNA, is double helix. It's two stranded. When we go to the next level, closest to our dimension, um, well, let's call it first level of etheric level, uh, there is another DNA there, which mm -hmm. is other dimensional, and it also double stranded. Now, when these four strands, when we unite, we kind of, when we raise our consciousness, when we shift to the 4D, when we go next level, these four strands, become united, the veil disappears, and all of them form a helix again. But this helix cannot be imagined in 3D because it's multidimensional. But in this multidimensional space, it's also a helix, four-stranded helix. That's how, you understand, how I understand it. And as we go higher and higher in dimensions, uh, we add more and more strands. Yeah. It's not that difficult. It's not that prohibited. It's not the veil is not that strong because through our chakras we are already connected to all dimensions. We are multidimensional by design. Our lower chakras connected are uh, connected to lower dimensions. The veil, the separation between lower three chakras and the heart chakra is is um, is not as strong. So so when we connect all the chakras, we become multidimensional. When we um, crystallize, when we put in order our energy flow, when we unite it, uh, these strands uh, sort of crystallize too in a way that be, they become more coherent, more structured, more um, coordinated together. So the, the DNA has both properties of random and fluid disordered DNA and ordered DNA, very, very well um, energized and well packed and well structured. So maybe when we talk about crystallization of DNA, um, that's what is happening. There are clusters, it's very long, it's three billion bases. So there are clusters which are always structured and there are clusters which are all, most of the time they are 
loose and um, not well structured, not well, not well packed, not well ordered. So when we energize it, it becomes more structured. When we are in higher spiritual state, we connect more and more to higher level energy, mm -hmm. to higher level DNA, and it becomes more coordinated to those levels. And as usual, the way to do it is through self-healing, letting go of uh, things that don't resonate, and following the things following the things that do resonate, and as usual, it's following the highest excitement, highest excitement. So when you are energized with your passion, with your understanding what you are, with your self-discovery and reconnection to the world, then your DNA is also re-energized and become more becomes more ordered and connected to other level DNAs. That's my understanding. That, that is beautiful, thank you. Is that why maybe children are easier to go higher dimension? Because they are more connected to or pursuing the higher, you know, their passions, they don't have much blockage. Is that how they could go, you know, higher dimension or they still could remember dream? So I guess another way to ask this question, in a dream state, somewhat say it's more your true, you know, the uh, reality, and we are more in a illusion when we are awake. Is that, based on the, on the logic, when you are dreaming, are we connected with extra strands? <laughs> Two questions, right? First, did you ask about hybrid children, right? And second, about the dreams, right? Well, I, I mean, just... Yes, newer generation of children, more in general, but it could, oh, go, it could, go, it could go hybrid. It's, right. It's somewhat similar. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the the Earth is changing. Their uh, formula for the reality is changing. Their uh, world, uh, the universe constants are changing in a mm -hmm. way that. Uh, new children are more connected to higher dimensions, new children are uh, more open to higher dimensions, uh, even souls which incarnate become more, mm, more of the higher level souls I guess are incarnated and the whole re uh, humanity is shifting, you know, if you just just look, the, uh, look at the movies 100 years ago you can see that there was a big shift in the last hundred years. So the Earth is changing, absolutely. Uh, the Earth is changing year by year. There is a huge shift everywhere. Um, I, I recently traveled to China and I see the change even there. So the whole, you know, now the whole humanity is connected through smartphones. Even the places on Earth which don't have um, Civilization, they, they already have smartphones, which is very surprising to me, but but the Earth is very changing very fast, and the new children are, in mysterious way, more, are more adjusted to this new reality. Uh, there is certain evolution which happens beyond the biology, beyond the biology. There is some miracle in, uh, in a way that new children are m designed more compatible with the new higher dimensional reality. So it might take several more generations, but we are shifting very fast right now. Uh, how is it happening? It's a great question, and it's related to DNA as well. How does the genome of the new children become more compatible to the new dimensional reality if the Darwin, if the Mendelian law, if the Darwinian law is still in place? So there is still selection, there is still inheritance. So why is the humanity evolving that fast? Great question, right? A <laughs> uh, couple guesses here. First is um, our alien friends and spiritual friends and angelic friends are helping, right? The alien friends are helping through hybr hybridization and infusions. <coughs> Sorry, infusions of DNA, right? 
and spiritual friends are helping help ways. You're locking up there, Max. Am I? Yeah, you're oh. locked up on that sentence. One, two, three, four, five. Can you hear me? Yes, you're fine now. <clears throat> Interesting. So, the alien friends are helping through hybridization program. More and more hybrid children are born on Earth as, you know, as conscious humans, but they, they, we carry, the star seeds carry the star DNA. So, some of the DNA of species from higher dimensions is now here, freshly infused. So, we carry more of the higher dimensional DNA, which help us to live with higher dimensions and be, and be friends with higher dimensions. So this is hybridization program. Second thing is spiritual. As we understand, uh, what seems to be a random event in biology, what seems to be a random event from 3D perspective, is in fact non-random event guided by spiritual, higher dimensional ideas. When the soul wants to incarnate, it has a capacity to shuffle the genes in a way are more compatible with its soul's design. Hmm. That's my understanding. So what seems to biologists a completely random event, it is the soul possibly with help of fairies and other dimensional workers is reshuffling the parents' genes to get the perfect genome for it to incarnate. Hmm, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yes, Max, because that's lead to my next question on walk-in. <laughs> yes. I'm very much interested in walk-in how that mechanically works, and then you partially answered my question because you are, when you are incarnating into certain lineage, there's a certain parts being fixed because you inherit the some of the DNA lineages from your parents, grandparents, and great grandparents, so forth. Mm -hmm. However, however, there gotta be something going on for this soul to express fully and even beyond the so-called scientifically understandable level. So one must be able to um, uh, one must be able to either program re reprogram existing DNA or activate the DNA. Or assimilate, right? I'm sorry, could you say that yes. again? Maybe they assimilate. assimilate. Assimilate, okay. So they got to be some type of, I won't say manipulation, but either you yourself be able to do it or some other being uh, be able to help to do it. Now, do you, I'm not sure you're familiar with walk-in. and walk. I am. Is, <laughs> is, is, is that, do you mind if, if, you, if you could expand that? And perhaps you could explain as a mechanics of it from DNA standpoint. So, kind of understand how one can be on top of the DNA, uh, be able to adjust to this change. You know, the Earth become going to the uh, fifth dimensional, higher dimensional vibration. How we may be able to adjust to that or even better, be able to um, be own our our self, the expression. Mm -hmm. um, Max is speaking. I'm familiar with one walk-in. Uh, I had a nice discussion with her. Um, she she had a presentation. Basically, she she gave a presentation telling her story. Um, uh, her previous host, previous soul, which was. Um, there before in that body um, died basically and she walked in 
So that was a lady in uh, in Toronto, and um, she had I don't remember three or four children, and by the time she died, uh, I don't remember what was the death, either ca bad car accident or cancer, but something pretty bad. I think it was more likely car accident. Um, you know, I can I can reconstruct it. I have it in her email, but basically she died pretty badly, and um, and then um, miraculously recovered. Her children were already big at that time; they were like grown ups. Miraculously recovered, and um, a new soul came in, uh, some alien soul, and uh, the body was completely repaired, and everybody knew that her children knew that it's a completely different person. The personality changed, her behavior changed, her interests changed, everything. But the body was the same, and she continues happily. She does some sort of. Uh, she became a businesswoman and um, is involved in certain uh, healing sales or something, some some sort of some natural product sales of some natural products. And she tells everybody her story, and uh, it's completely believable. So, how technically is it possible that uh, so somebody Max, dies? Yes. Um, so, is this person aware that she Absolutely. is walking? I, I see. She's um, completely aware. The other person is died, has died, and and is le has left. Her contract is finished, but the body was basically recycled. Is there any way someone in between? Because I've seen uh, many cases the person completely change, but the person is not necessarily be aware. <laughs> well, that's not the walk in. <laughs> um, you can define it in many ways. I think. Um, the idea that soul can be upgraded in many ways and shift in many ways is kind of around okay. that uh, a soul can be upgraded and sometimes it is the other way around it is you are the same but you're shifting to a different timeline <laughs> <laughs> you're shifting to a different timeline you have the same family same everything but things change yes how did that happen <laughs> And there is also a Mandela effect. Somebody brought it to my atten attention. Uh, it, it's it's a mainstream psychology, sort of, not psychology. I don't know how it's called. Mainstream science discovered it. It's it's discussed in the terms of mainstream science. But anyway, somebody discovered that at certain group convention, part of the people believe that Nelson Mandela, the leader of uh, South Africa was dead for a long time, and some of the group were pretty much aware that he was alive and everything was well. He was alive, so, so you know, both 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 parts like just came from different parts of the uh, from different timelines. So people from different timelines came together in a certain meeting, and that and it should be prohibited by the laws of reality, but. I guess as the laws of reality change right now, it's possible for us to meet people from different timelines. So maybe when somebody tells you something that you believe is a lie, it's um, it's just um, a truth from a different reality. And I meet I meet it all the time. I meet it all the time. But we shifted away from the point of DNA. So your question was, how is it possible that a soul can enter the body? Uh, walking can enter the body, right? Well, no, not not so much of that that mechanic. I, I'm interesting from DNA perspective. So we inherit, let's say, wrong DNA lineage. Well, it's not the one that we wanted, but we uh -huh. inherit. But shall mm -hmm. be able to manage uh -huh. to overcome the, the lineage and be able to access beyond the lineage to collect your other self from, like you said, other timeline. And that's also related to something to do with the DNA, I understand. I just wonder, understanding that perhaps many of us be able to experience or fully express our ability and our desire. So let, let's say I want to be uh, the dancer from the scientist. Because I was really dancer, 
that's what I think now. Is it how that gonna how can I pull out my piece of the self from different place a time stream and call upon myself and express that? Manifest and express that. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Ah, so um Let's let's be brief on that. Brief, very brief. Um, first, the DNA is not fixed by itself. It's huge. You have three billion bases to choose from, and mm -hmm. some of that is dormant. Some of that is messy. So just cleaning up this DNA, uh, restructuring it, the same sequence, just restructuring, kind of cleaning it up from the mess, energizing it. Imagine the books which is which has never been read. So when you open it, when you read it, when your attention goes through it, it becomes energized. So re-energizing dormant DNA in your body is one way, uh, and it is fully in alignment with your with uh, our mainstream biology. The DNA is dormant; it can be re-energized. It is happening all the time. Rejuvenation, food, um, all all sorts of healing techniques, all of that healing modalities, come to re-energizing your DNA. Your cells are temporary. Uh, there are s stem cells which produce new cells, and ju just through that process, you can refresh your cells, refresh your proteins, refresh your even your DNA because. Uh, you get new uh, offsprings of your stem cells, and as they mature, they can become healthier. Because the stem cells keep the DNA from your lineage uh, in the most conserved way. And as your cells are produced by stem cells, they, uh, that process affects the, your health. The process is 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 affected by your mood, by your vibration, by your food, by your energy. So as you assemble your energy, make it more coherent. Production of your new cells becomes more coherent as well. So it's even within the mainstream biology, it's possible. Now, second thing again within the mainstream biology, there is there are viruses. You get your viral viral flus and common colds and stomach infections all the time, especially in big cities. Keep in mind that all of those are upgrades, DNA upgrades. Most of the viruses are capable of modifying your DNA. Some of them are more modi modifying your DNA, more they kind of designed to enter and rearrange it yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. some of them and some of them are less known to be modifying the DNA, but they're also capable, also capable. Uh, the key enzyme they're known already for 50 years or 70 years is called revertase, reverse transcriptase. Yeah, From the RNA virus, yeah. it makes the DNA. It, and uh, transposition is also known, transposons. Mm -hmm. Your DNA is fluid. Some transposons jump back and forth. So it is known by mainstream science to be rearranged as we go. So these two options are already kind of mainstream understanding. Your DNA is not fixed. Now we know from many near-death experiences uh, there is all also angelic intervention. So when things go wrong, when you die, they come, bring you back, fix your body miraculously just through a miracle, and uh, it's working again. Same things happen all the time. If you wish, if you, if there is a justification why you need your DNA rearranged, you can shift to a new body with a new DNA design. When you discover that you are a hybrid, when you connect to certain alien consciousnesses, they also can help you by infusing your DNA with their DNA. So that's also an open option. Now there is a program, volunteer program. You apply for infusion of Arcturian and so on, uh, Yael, Pleiadian, Aliran, and so on DNA. So we have lots of 
options. And again, shifting from one body to another, as you mentioned, from one reality to another reality. You shift anyway, but if you consciously want to shift, uh, if you if your focus of attention, if your focus of attention is there, it attracts through the law of, law of attraction. It attracts new genetic new genetic design to you. You just discover the talent which you seemingly forgot. You discover that it is there. It's dormant, and you can wake it up. Mm. Um, I think we covered this, but uh, um, uh, so I just want to clarify. I just want to uh, yeah. make sure that we are on the same page. The infusion we talk about the how how we know the act uh, the infusion being activated from our previous um, seminar. But when you say infusion, is that different from implants? Oh, I'm Absolutely. sorry. I Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being mixed up two things. I'm sorry that. Imp yeah, sorry. When you talk about DNA infusion, uh, we discuss about the last seminar. Correct? Is the same thing? Yes. Okay, uh, Max. Uh, I do understand. Though I just wanted to. I want to thank you about your virus because when I was a sequencing uh, genome, you remember the Human Genome Project. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was one of the scientists as well, was uh, cloning like a crazy. I found we have a more similarity with viral DNA. <laughs> DNA. <laughs> uh -huh. And I thought it was quite interesting. And at that point, I kind of realized we are using the virus to manipulate the DNA for a long time, I would, I would assume. So I, I would think that it's angelic and divine intervention. So some angelic and divine forces are using the viral viruses to upgrade us. I see. That's wonderful. I just want to stop and give an opportunity to other participants who may wish to um, ask a question. Uh, I have a more, but I just want to stop because um, I want to make sure everybody has opportunity here, uh, especially Valerie or Maria, who will be hosting activation of DNA tomorrow. Um, why are they thinking of the question, Max? We have a new energy coming in from planetary alignment. Is that something we can do to activate our DNA for our liking around this time? Like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. So the, sh the shifts of the energy happen often, but you know big shifts happen less often. And as the energy is shifting, you can ride the wave. You can ride the wave. So feel it when you see that the world is shifting, when you are shifting. You can be crushed by a wave, or you can ride it. So learn to ride it. Invite help, invite healing. Uh, connect to others. Often, it it is the best way to to be upgraded to invite help from others. And it is intention that matters most. Yes. All right. Thank you. So it's basically talking to whoever you resonate with, and then talk to them about the specific. About your Find DNA. a talented shaman, a talented healer, a talented upgrader. Some people are professional upgraders. All they do is upgrade somebody else's DNA. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I have a couple of questions, looks like. Uh, Carolina has a question. Hello. Yes. Um, well, yes. Um, hi, Max. Uh, my question is about um, how do we... Oh, naturally activate our alien DNA, not the infused one, but the one we were born with. Uh, galactic languages, I guess, would be best. Uh, there is many ways. Um, any meditation is good. Um, reading, talking, um, networking. I love networking. Find the people with the same interest. Meet with them physically. Do Reiki. Do whatever. Eat together drink together, non-alcoholic beverages, <coughs> walk on the nature, swim, jump, dance, 
Ah, Alien DNA. Mm. <laughs> I don't have any new formula. Um, Thank you. Alien DNA is um, is there um, for the higher dimensional purposes. So galactic languages and shifting to higher dimension is great. Don't forget to shift back. So the main message here is shift there and back. There and back. And the symbol for you would be this. You shift one way, another. And this um, infinity sign, the lines don't actually cross. They go, uh, go in the same kind of uh, area, but they don't actually cross. They, it's it's three-dimensional infinity sign. So use that sign to shift to higher dimension and back. And Thank you, Mark. Feel it, feel it with a purpose. Feel it with the highest excitement. Um, it could be by itself. It could be highest excitement. Could be to activate your alien DNA. But really, here the idea of service. Service to humanity, service to the alien, service to the unity, uh, service to the creator, and breathe, bring here the idea of self-discovery. Find who you are and why you are. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Anybody else? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I asked the question, I've had an influx of energies coming in recently, and I asked a channeler what the mechanics were, and I was told I was receiving my light body. What does that mean? Hmm. Uh, my best uh, interpretation is that imagine yourself as a, a shish kebab skewer. One of your bodies is um, 3D physical, and there is plenty of light bodies on the same skewer. Uh, Kind of, they can shift back and forth between dimensions. And um, until lately, you were ready for the upgrade, but you were in the dark. You were not ready, not allowing, basically. And as you become a little open and allowed it, as you become excited about it, as your uh, focus of attention kind of shifted to that idea and it became positive to you, the change became positive, then that becomes became possible and becomes possible. So these slight bodies are shifting towards you and reunited, reconnected, are reconnecting and reuniting with your physical body. So and that, yes? Finish, please, I'm sorry. And that happens on the level of DNA, of course, Parts of DNA, of course, and on the level of chakras, of course, and on the level of meridians, of course, on the, on the level of bones and nerves and brain and the ideas, of course, the ideas um, that the, their and subconscious ideas as well, subconscious. It's it's a um, it's two way process. Two. The two-way process. You shift there, they shift towards you. That light body has its own consciousness, and you have your own. When you unite, you you will find within yourself new ideas and new experiences. So you will be upgraded on the incarnational level as well. You will get more of the past. You will get more of the past life. Um, most of the past lives become experiences and um, knowledge becomes accessible to you as well. Thank you very much. That is excellent. I think, Valerie, I think you have a question? Yes, thank you, Mikiko. Um, Mikiko and I were just talking about this the other day, but um, I had 
a really interesting dream where I um, dreamt about two elderly people um, that did not look familiar, but whom I felt love for immediately. And I ended up like taking care of them all night long. And with love. Mm -hmm. And um, I called them grandparents. Oh, yeah. And um, at the end of the dream, when I come out of it, I was missing them as much as I had missed the grandparents I knew here. So, um, I mean, I still miss them yeah, deeply. And Makiko and I were talking about who they could be and could be relatives possibly from another lifetime. And I'm wondering, how does that work with the DNA? Does that mean that they were um, relatives of the same DNA or relatives of a different DNA from a different lifetime? I, th I guess I'm a little confused about that. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, a camel came to mind a shadow, lots of light and a shadow and a camel. Um, to, so your main question is past lives, relatives in past lives, are they related to you now? As I understand, uh, there is that reincarnation happens not only one on one, one past life reincarnates as a new past, as a new life here. Uh, it happens also in uh, in families. The fam the family, you know, it makes a lot of sense from spiritual perspective. Why would uh, why would spirits reincarnate separately? You know, if they like to play with each other, they would reincarnate as a group again. Some will become relatives, and some will become just. Uh, friends or mates so it's it's usual it's not an exception it's usual that relatives in the past lives would become relatives in the new in in the recent life moreover the the whole Atlantis reincarnates as United States I'm sorry the whole generation of Atlantis that um, lived through the downfall of Atlantis reincarnates in, as a population of United States. Um, I want to just stop there um, and ask because I do have some memory from Atlantis and a couple of other periods and um, but I didn't I wasn't born here. And so, Max, just, just a second here, Makiko. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Back to um, what we were talking about. I would, were my grandparents then that I'm dreaming of, were they of Atlantis? I can't tell. I would say no. No. They didn't look like Atlantean. Yeah, I know. Makiko said they didn't look like, uh, or they looked like rather oriental. Yes and ancient and they did seem ancient to me I just um, I felt so much love that at first their faces were different to me you know what I mean like I didn't recognize them and so they looked really different to me but then as I took care of them I knew I knew them in my heart and I had so much love for them it was just overflowing I would do anything for them but Valerie you probably had hundreds of life here so that's probably one of the past that doesn't exclude you from yeah, that. Yeah, I'm wondering about the DNA of that though. Yeah. yeah, so that's going back, Max, is my original question of there are many DNA or well, there are much DNA out there physically and then outside inaccessible to us that reflect a piece of our self not related to DNA lineage. And then I understand as we have increased our knowingness, we have a more access to the parts of ourselves. As, um, because I begin to wonder my own, because uh, I, had, I remember many of my past lives, 
and only one, no, I would say only several of them are related to my Japanese, looks like a Japanese ancestor. The rest of them is in Europe, completely different places. <laughs> so, how this works? <laughs> Um, yeah, you can uh, reincarnate into very different race, radically different race. Um, but keep in mind the humanity is so well mixed. There is almost no isolated, incompatible uh, genetics. I mean, there is the exchange of, of genes happened all the time when tr one tribe would take over another tribe they would mate they would take slaves so basically yeah mate um, and take slaves and there were travelers there were trader routes so the exchange of genes was happening most of the time Australia was a little bit on the side but again not forever these are the same humans, they just didn't have the, as much of connection. And also there were aliens here and there transferring and borrowing the genes from any tribe they liked. If they wanted to create a new tribe, they would borrow genes from any tribe. So the humanity is well uh, mixed together, connected together, and also connected to the aliens. So, so none of the humans is incompatible to the soul, so, so it's relatively easy for the soul to in current in different humans but obviously they would pick certain traits certain vibes which would resonate with them better and they always I think in this three billion basis they always have certain pieces to pick from one or another parent so they would from that big collection they would always have something to pick to to construct what they like and if they didn't have something they might I would I would assume that they could borrow it from elsewhere and um, and just plug it in. I think the miracles of that sort are not prohibited at all. I think the it, it, it's been routinely done. Um, you know, when we sequence the human DNAs, we always find little mismatches, little inconsistencies, and we just you know say that things happen. You know, we don't know from from where that piece of DNA come, but let's ignore it as as noise and. So, so I wouldn't be surprised if divine intervention happened at construction of every human genetics, of That'd genetics of every human. Okay, would that also explain why I have like a different blood type than the rest of my family? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I'm serious, I do. Uh, no one else has Rh negative O, and I do. Wait. R H negative. What what is your parents' blood type? Um, they are like A and A B and that kind of thing. A and yeah, A A Bs and all that kind of. You know what I mean? That combination, but no. Um, and you are no R H negative. Yeah, no R H negative O in the whole family. I see. That's interesting. You know, uh, Max is laughing. I also understand from other show. You could change your blood type, right? Because blood exchange every 50, 60 days. But anyway, I gonna stop here. I think other people has a question. Uh, can I pronounce a day or are they? How do you, how do you pronounce your name? I'm sorry. Oh hi, uh, my name is pronounced Ade. Ade. <laughs> hi everyone, nice to meet you. Hi. Max, hi. nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, my question um, has to do with mental illness in relation to the DNA. I'm not quite sure how to formulate the question, but can you like shed some light on that aspect of? Give me a little more. Like, does it have to do with the wrong DNA being act? Well, not the wrong, but like certain DNA activation, certain strand. Are you talking about mental, mental illness? illness? Mm -hmm. What kind of mental mental illness? Uh, for example, maybe like schizophrenia. What kind of schizophrenia? If if, if 
if you can, could specify. It's little, I mean, it's so wide, it's really hard to connect to that. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I was reading the chat, something in the chats. I'm not sure how many different kinds of schizophrenia there are. This is like a hundreds, subject. Hundreds. I'm not, okay. Yeah, this is something I'm a little green on. That's why I'm asking. So maybe let's do like a different type of um, mental illness, like depression, or maybe even bipolar disorder. Okay, so are you talking about a specific person or in general? In general. Oh, there is a huge variety. So basically, it is very healthy for humanity to have all sorts of mental grades of abnormality. There is no normal person on Earth whatsoever. There is no norm. It's all plus, minus. There is like many factors, many grades, many degrees of freedom. Some people are more conservative. They want everything the same every day. Some people are so in love with new things, they can't really walk the same pathless every day. They would, you know, stop and go around, do whatever, not to repeat things. They want new every day, right? Uh, that's one, one degree of freedom. Another degree of freedom, some people love to be grounded. They want to control everything. And other people want to shift away. They are so dreamy, they can't really be in this present. They want to be in their dream. So, so all of that makes a lot of sense and it makes the humanity more stable in a time of mm, healthy growth maybe more conservative people are sort of uh, prospering but at the time of crisis the people uh, who can change who can uh, shift who can uh, grab ideas from elsewhere who can intuitively find answers might you know save the day so so all, all of that is needed, right? Um, now, some people are not well fit in the society, like autists, overly depressed people, overly um, absent people, people who are not present in this reality, right? So, um, that happens. Um, and again, it's not it's not clear, in most cases, it's not clear if it is their fault or the society fault, because um, sometimes the person is just way too open, like many autists are way too open, they grab the information from outside, and if the information is negative, they become depressed, right? So, so in most cases, it's not a clear picture, like same person placed in healthy family would be thriving, and placed in overly controlling family would be like completely nuts. When we, when I meet a, an autistic child or teenager, an autistic teenager, the first thing they think about is, what's up with the mother? Usually, it's overly controlling mother who is very tightly, energetically connected to a child. If you take the mother out of the picture, the child becomes way different. So it's. The DNA here, how does the DNA play here? I mean, the DNA, of course, plays a role. It predisposes, it defines, I would say, about 20 to 40 percent of personality. DNA contributes to about, to personality, DNA, the genes contribute to personality from 20 to 40 percent. And everything, um, the the soul, the past life experience, the soul itself contributes another 20 to 40 percent, and the rest is what is formed during the life. So, so it is the same formula as, as mainstream biology. They just sort of say 50 percent is genetics, 50 percent is the experience, and we say it's 30 percent roughly genetics, 30 percent roughly experience, and 30 percent roughly uh, spiritual, plus minus, right? Um, and again, the, your DNA is not fixed, as we just
it's just activated, you can shift, you can uh, infuse, you can um, ride a wave of energy, you can ride the wave, you can shift to a different dimension, you can modify it. Um, it's not fixed. And you can look in your DNA and find pieces which suit you. Now, if you have depression, who doesn't, right? Uh, yeah, play, uh, I mean, there is so many, you know, when we don't have a specific person, there is so many um, kinds of people, like, not every advice works for every person, so it's it's individual, but a Reiki energy healing, uh, I would highly recommend. Um, see what, uh, stop watching TV, I would highly recommend. Um, minimize your drug intake, it's kind of obvious, right? And then play smart, be practical. Okay. I'm sorry, what did you say last? So be smart, play oh, be smart, be practical. practical. Oh, oh, be practical. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Um, I think Maria has a great question to follow up on that. Uh, she would like to know how many strands of DNA being activated can you tell us, like each of us, or I guess could be specifically to her. Perhaps, Max, you said that, uh, you know, once you activate the DNA, you can do shift the dimension, you know, from that line. Could you kind of, uh, ex maybe perhaps you could explain to us, what do you mean by activated means? You know, you, people say DNA activation, DNA strand activation, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just a second, just a second. One yeah. moment. Bear with me one moment. Uh, we need a little time to formulate the answer. Can anybody start answering this while we are working on it? Um, sure. I mean, I could just talk. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, try to talk on about that topic. That is, yeah, the answer, so there yeah. are like a different, uh, different uh, things I heard. I'm mean, just going to share that with you all. Um, there's a one uh, teaching uh, by uh, I think Andrew uh, when he was reading um, uh, reading my DNA or somebody I guess like a Tosh too the reading my DNA was they they found out some very interesting thing about unique thing about the DNA. Andrew was telling me I have a third strand, um, so that means I have a, so this based on where this strands coming from, I have. Uh, heart space connection to this planet. So if I wish to connect, I have um, a Kesic record from that planet, be able to exchange knowledge and so forth. So this third strand to me is very foreign, other than, um, and then I, 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 even to this day, I do not know how to activate. I see the energy. But that doesn't mean that I have activated, or is it also activated? I'm not sure. That's a question mark. And there's another school of thoughts that people say, hey, you have a 12 strands or 200 strands. You already have it. just need to activate it. And then you, they usually you know, have a sounds or somebody singing or some kind of wavelength of a music comes in. You're supposed to listen, right? And then I have no idea how that's activated, um, etc. So first thing is that I like to have a clarity on the strands. <laughs> and then second, what is the activation means? Is it on and off switch, or it's once activated, it's continuously activated or physically linked? Um, and then the, such as um, I guess Maria has a very good point. Hey, we already have it available. Yeah, yeah, you just need to activate it. So, I think maybe you're talking about same difference. So, uh, if you could shed some lights into this area, so we kind of be on the sa same page in a way. So, when we talk about activating DNA or strands, we're talking about same thing, and um, understand the symptom of activation, and you could feel like. Own, right? 
now we activate it, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so got it. So first we have to define. Um, oh, Maria had something want to say. Do yes, you go ahead. Him? I just wanted to add this, that uh, some, um, s some other channeler, per some other channeler, like Sue, that I was talking to, she refers to 12, to these two strands of DNA junk and calls the rest of it actually the normal strands of DNA that has been deactivated but by other beings. So it's just, a, you know, that is her perspective, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, there are several questions. So let, let's start from the last one. Junk, yes, our DNA is pretty junky. It's pretty messed up. Uh, we can see that there is um, lack of coherence, lack of order. It's, um, it is, we come from very impure lineage. We have... Uh, lots of different things in us. At the same time, we are very energetic. We are proliferating well, uh, and, you know, we like ourselves. We humans like ourselves, right? So, you know, we are we have junk DNA, junky DNA, messy DNA, but we kind of like the way we are. Uh, other species, like much more pure, they have much more ordered DNA, and some, um, to, as you know, too much order uh, sometimes limits, uh, sometimes uh, has less resources. So we like the way that we are resourceful. And obviously, like the spiritual levels of spiritual light bodies, they are much more coherent because they are much more designed. We kind of are designed, but then we evolve at random. And they are designed and evolve in a much more thoughtful, Full thought through process, more purposeful process. So that's why uh, the light bodies and higher level DNAs are beautiful, and we, yeah, we are junky, messy. It's I agree with that in general. That's how we are. Now uh, switching back to the idea of activating the strands. Let's use two different words. One would be within our DNA, physical. Uh, let's call it fragments. We can activate fragments of it. Within the same physical DNA, some of that is dormant and some of that is active. We can activate more of its dormant fragments within the same DNA through energizing and all, all of the healthy practices. Now, how do you tell if you activated your other dimensional strengths? And the answer, you would know. You would know for sure. Uh, basically, when you activate next two strands, you become fourth dimensional. You become hmm, uh, on the same level as our alien friends, Pleiadians, Yael, Lirans. So you would be among them. You would be able to see them. You would be able to do similar things as they do. You would be psychic, you would know the answer, how many strands you have, you would really see them, you would be able to uh, communicate to the spirit. So when you're there, uh, more strands activation obviously is possible, but then you, are, you, you will, when your strands activated, you will already know, you will already have the communication to all of those levels, you'll be beyond the veil. So when we say the bad beings or the bad spirits separated us from our higher strengths, there's the fall of Atlantis, there's the fall of humanity from higher dimension to the place where we are now, beyond the veil. So we know about our DNA and we, we are now in the process of reconnecting to the four dimensional and higher dimensional levels. So, yeah, you, you, you see, I mean, those people with uh, activated higher strands, you see them. Uh, I met them. <laughs> we know them. They're, they are among our ranks. Um, you know, they are just higher. They, they, they shine. Those people shine. Those people shine. They, I know, when I place Reiki on them, I feel alien. I mean, they are so shining energy, I cannot 
I cannot really reach their level, so I have to say, no, please go to my level so I can connect to you, because you cannot give Reiki actually to someone who is way higher. They have to kind of step a few steps down in their vibration to meet your energy, and then you can Reiki each other. Um, you know, they have intuition, they have psychic abilities, and um, they uh, ride the wave of life in a way, you know, not always financially successful, but successful in terms of playing it right, playing it wise, and uh, uh, shining on the way. Did I answer your question? I didn't answer one more question. There was a question. Some people have different spiritual designs. Some people have this kind of design, and some people have this kind of design. So when they say you have 12 strands and you have like 14, um, there's a different spiritual designs, and that's all I know. Yeah, I feel like I'm actually more of 15 than 14. I don't know why, but. Uh, the question is, um, what do you mean by connecting? I mean, just getting like telepathic or having like regular conversation with aliens and spirits? Well, more alien than spirits. Yes, connecting to the aliens, yes. Connecting to the DNA, ah. It's 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 all together. I think you can do it consciously. I think you can. Do, I think DNA is conscious. I think you connect connect consciously to DNA. Um, um, just becoming more healthy. Like you know, there are miracles in health. Some some people come from low health to very vibrant health. They just become invincible in a way. I would say that. I I, I see that those people. I I I'm always surprised how different we are. No, some yeah. of us are always sick and some of us are just shiny, shiny. I've been always very, very healthy physically, so I've never had any issues with that. But thank you, Max. I appreciate thank it. You. Um, is there any question around the strands, like how many strands? I'm not sure you... I, think, I also wanted to comment that I think they always come in pairs. I'm pretty sure they always come in pairs. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering if she could, I mean, he could pinpoint, like, you know, tell, you know, and tell individual how many are already been, but I guess he's just, you know, leaving it up to us to figure out. No, I'm, I'm not there. Just, uh, yeah, it's interesting. There's a lot of things floating around. Um, what I heard, well, this is a long time ago, Lemurian, right? When they were, when the Earth was still a high dimension, they had a 200 to 400 strands DNA. <laughs> That's what I've been uh, learning. So compared to that, uh, we have a lot more to go, which is a wonderful. It's a lot more room left to evolve. Um, so it's quite exciting. If there's a no question around the strand and activation, I'd like to invite Harris. I think he has some question around. Harris, do you want to ask yourself? Because this looks like a more like a comment than a question. So, do you, your microphone working, Harris? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Now we, yes, now we can. Hey, how you doing? You're you're completely right, Kiko. I think it's a statement um, of some sort. I would I would love uh, for Max to add to it, or anyone to just add to it. I just um, wanted to state that it's really your awareness, belief systems, and usefulness of the DNA that starts an activation. Once the intention and desire is expressed, and the belief systems start to shift. You know, this happens until the activation is complete. So really the DNA are there. I know we, we say we are activating them, but really you are activating your belief systems, your desire, your, you know, to... Uh, so what this means is you can communicate directly to your DNA and tell them to start the process. Uh, and you want to know what that is. So all this would 
come into place. But it's really the, the, the activation starts from the belief systems and, and the awareness, really, uh, of the DNA. The awareness that there are more strands, the awareness of, of uh, that this can happen if this goes into the belief system, the shift starts to happen. The DNA starts to activate in those ways. I just wanted to add uh, to that. And if anyone can kind of elaborate, or, you know, that would be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we want to start wrapping up, um, and we want to reflect on what Harry says. Um, one idea we want to bring up is about the value of emotions mm. and the value of negative emotions as well. The earthly design, the design of earthly human is such that it is often impossible to control your life. You're not designed to control your life. You're not designed to know what will happen, to know where to go. You are not even designed to remember a lot of things. It's, it's not in the design. The human is capable of many great things, but not being clear. I mean, being clear on Earth is close to impossible. So, emotions are, in a way, a tool to survive and to succeed in that lack of clarity. Emotions connect you to your intuition in many ways. And you can become friendly to your positive and negative emotions and use them to calibrate your life in a way you like it, in a way which you find optimal. So many things you, like normal human and normal human, usually juggles, operates daily with thousands of things which don't make a lot of sense. Thousands of things which don't make a lot of sense and hundreds of unknowns, hundreds of unknowns. So by Tagging different things with different emotions, positive, negative, warm, cold, and so on, sad, happy, joyful, sexy, disgusting, and so on. Everything, every thought, you can allow them to work their way in your subconscious by re-evaluating different things on emotional level and letting them play in your subconscious, you circumvent the problem of not knowing where you are and not knowing all the answers. Playing with, with unknowns using emotions become possible. So that's one of the ideas. And the second idea is choosing the positive emotion where you are neutral. Basically, don't worry, be happy rule. Um, you go up and down. You go excited, depressed, excited, depressed, happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy. In the middle, when you are not sure, when there is equal amount of danger and attraction of sadness and happiness, that's where you have a choice to choose positivity and shift the balance to the positive. So when you look around and you are not sure where you are in emotional level, bring up, make a choice to bring up happiness, make a choice to smile, make a choice to see the positive side of things. And this is the way to upgrade your DNA. Your DNA is upgraded by light. Your DNA is constantly being upgraded. You are shifting daily as the planet shift, planets shift, as the moon rotates, as the tide goes up and down, as your biological rhythm goes up and down, and all parts of your biological clock goes up and down. You shift all the time. So in certain points, you have decision forks to go up or down. So 
make your choice to energize your light body. Make a choice make a choice to energize your DNA fragments, physical and non-physical. Make a choice to connect to the creator and invite the hidden energies, their energizing energies, their life force energies to fill up your DNA and fill you with health, happiness, and hope. Play with your emotions and don't be afraid of negative emotions. Use them, be, become a friend of them and tag different things in your life and keep re-tagging them as you grow, as you shift, keep re-tagging them. And when you get a cold, when you get any sickness, when you get shaky, understand it is an opportunity for the DNA upgrade. It is an opportunity, an opportunity for the DNA upgrade. As you go through a virus, as you go through foods, as you go through bacterial infections, they all bring to you new DNA, so you can choose to be upgraded. Mm. You can choose to become upgraded. Instead of going down, you can ride a wave and go up. Amen. Wow. Beautiful. We are just loving it. I'm leading the chat. Everybody's chiming in how beautiful the speech is. Max and Michelle pointed out the beautiful things too. She said word. So you taught us taught us in the beginning light sound and mm -hmm. it has an impact DNA. DNA is a transformer. So more we encourage and pray with those light sound attach our emotions, a compass, without justice's judgment, just assessing it, and bring ourselves toward joy, happiness, and you mentioned about wisdom, attach positive to positive to neutral, that's uh, wisdom and it's just wonderful thing. Um, that's something that I definitely like to learn more about, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. That thank thought you. and in teaching. I know you, You looks like you have to go, is that correct, Max? Yes, thank you all for coming, thank you, it was a nice audience, I had fun with you, and thank you for co-creating this conversation. Would you like to finish with a blessing or Om sound? Um, okay, um, anybody else? Let's do a serious. Um, galactic languages, everything is welcome. Maria? Yes? Would you like to do it today? Okay. All right. Um. Ni siti kiyana yana ala kaku ma la sata kiyana a sata kiyana taku ma sa iari ala sa isiti kuyunata ma la ikiti kiyana taku ini siti kiyana ala tiki ala tuku mana ya iara taku a sa isi ili yama iyana yata olo iyi ala kia kiyana ta ana iti kutuku ya. Finished. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Till then. Have a great, wonderful day. Bye. Bye.